Whenever you're trying to use a virtual instrument and you're trying to bounce what you did with it, sometimes you might want to access different parts of the signal or you might want to split it if you're working with drums, for example. Or maybe you want to print the dry signal against the effects if you're using a synth. For us to be able to do this, we are going to use BST3 plugins with multi-outputs within Reaper. Straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and let's learn about why you might want to have different track templates to work with virtual instruments within your session. So maybe you have this clean session and you just want to start making some drums. You have two choices. You could just load a drum plugin and then you will have to do all of this sort of routing and turn this MIDI into audio. I mean, there are lots of steps. What I do is that I use this kind of BSC3 that say multiple outputs, 18 outputs. You load that into any track and there's always a way to route within the plugin how to assign which parts of the virtual instrument to where in the outputs. So for example, here I can auto route everyone from buses one to eight, including the stereo out, and now it's assigned from one to eight. I'm using the XO by Excellent, and you will probably want to go into this part of the plugin, the plugin pin connector, where you can assign the inputs one and two towards which outputs into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For this to work, you will also need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight new tracks. Each of them will be receiving from the drums plugin. So I could only make one single track, I can use an action called copy selected track receives, select the rest of my tracks and paste receives to selected tracks. Now it's going everywhere. I will have to name all of these, kick, snare, a hat, whatever you need to do. So you have everything sorted out. And the important thing is that from the plugin that you're routing from, what sound is coming from which pin within the plugin. So as I said, if I have this pin connection, if I have one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 or I can turn this into a one, two, eight, that's 16, 18, 18 outputs. Let's make these track channels 18. Now you can see I have an 18 channel track and now I can send bus one and two to exits three and four and so forth. I could also leave out the master out and just repatch everything since I won't be using this. So with this same idea of routing from one, two, three, four, five, six, I have to make this kick take from one, two, the snare from three, four, hat from five, six, and so forth. Usually it's so much faster for me to just open the routing window and I'm sending to kick and I'm taking it from snare, stereo source, three, four, hat, five, six, seven, eight, blah, blah, blah and you will always want to go into one and two of the tracks that are receiving. If you go into three and four, Reaper by default makes it into the sidechain input. So you, you probably won't be able to listen to it because those tracks are stereo channels. So you just go into one and two always when you're checking from a multi-out plugin. Now, if I only listen to this channel because I have the sense turned off, now I'm only listening to the kick drum because remember that I said that this will be my kick then I would have snare and hat and whatever. If I go to any other channel like this, that's actually snare. But if I turn it off, now I have my snare completely separate. And this is the reason why you might find this way of routing out your instruments really useful. If I want to take everything from this plugin outside, I could do it different ways. I could go into the render section and I could say normalize relative, so it's already pre-mixed in some sense. I could render the WAVs and I could split the MIDI and go into track by track and assigning, assigning every single one of those drums. I could even drag it all the way here. Now I have all of these drums triggering the X the XO plugin. I could drag the stems, the audio stems from the plugin as well, or I could drag the samples out of the plugin. But all of this requires much more routing, printing, rendering, and loading more instances of the same plugin. When in drum programming plugins, you usually have tons of samples 
that you can try and stick with the one fits best with your song. So this is a lot of work just to be able to bounce a, a couple of drums. So we could use track templates. If you haven't seen my video on track templates, you can watch it after this one. I'll leave a link in the description. And what I can do now is after I have done all of my routing, I can right click and save track as track template. That lets me bring into a whole new session a track template that's called XO XLN Multi Out 18 Channels. And now everything is routed properly so I can record everything outside from this and everything is work. There is another reason why you might find this way of working interesting. Usually, drum programming plugins have some sort of internal processing that you might want or you might not want because they have some sort of compressor, crunchiness, saturation, subclipping. Uh, you might even have some effects built in like delays, reverbs for snares and hats. I don't know. And you might want to keep that as a part of the tone and that lets you have like the straight sound from the developer. But since we are picky about how we sound, you might want to be able to process all of this differently. So maybe, so maybe you still want to process or pre-process everything a little bit with SSL plugins or some sort of channel strip. And even though you might already have that built in within the track template, I remind you that I have also a video on how to fast load effects from your keyboard. And I have this, and I also use the Stream Deck to do this kind of actions. So I don't forget because sometimes there are so many keyboard shortcuts. And I remember that it's the three modifiers plus six. So I can just go like this. And now I have an SSL channel built into every single one of them. And remember that if you want this to be loaded anytime you load the track template, my suggestion is to have them off, <coughs> select all of them, save this as a track template, override your previews as you keep updating your version of the template. And when you load it again, you will have this. As far as my understanding goes, this is easier on the CPU because it doesn't have to load up a bunch of plugins that are already using resources. So it could be a faster way if your computer is not so stable or if you're using some heavy FX chains to load them bypass and then you turn them on just because sometimes if you do one step at a time, it doesn't crash as easily. Let's go into a music example that I did for this. As I said, you might want to use the internal processing of the plugin. So as I said, you might want to use internal processing of the plugin and have something like this. And remember, these are buses, these aren't really channels. And honestly, that's not the only use. Maybe you have a synth that has multi outputs. <clears throat> For example, the Source XD that was just updated recently. Uh, now we even have. So if you're using a plugin like Search XT Synthesizer, it's quite an awesome plugin. I will probably make some videos on it because it's so big, so useful, so flexible, and it also has built-in multi-outputs, up to six channels. So if I only load the plugin, what's going to happen is if I check the pin connector in one and two, it's going to out, go out one and two. In this case, I'm not going to go depth with this, but I have two scenes that are like two layers of the synth and one has one sound. Let me share. And the, and the other layer has this sound. So this is with intention of having a bigger, wider sound that sounds more or less like this. And I'm using the built-in effects that I have at my disposal. Again, I'm not going to go into depth in depth with this one because you have way too many routing options, but I'm only using these effects that are available here. And maybe you have some third party plugins that you really like how they sound and you want to add them as part of the summing of the sound. So you might want to use another instance of the same plugin where you're changing the plugin pin connector and you're using the scene A output and the scene B output that are these two. And remember that you have to make sense as many as you need to record that instrument on the Side. So on the routing for the track, I'm going to take output 3 and 4, that's scene A, and output 5 and 6, that's scene B. 
into one and two of one track into input one and two of another track that I named search scene A and search scene B. And please remember that you actually have to plug in scene A three and four and scene B to five and six in this example. That way it goes into here. If I unplug these ones, if I unplug these ones, see, now I have a fuller sound. You have to make these kind of connections by hand at least once, otherwise it simply won't work. If you still want to use your sidechain input for something, for example, like triggering it with a drum, you can still make it and you can assign maybe one and two or seven and nine, and I don't know, whatever you want. So with this in mind, the idea is that this, this channel that has the actual plugin will not be processing with effects because I have them turned up right here right it won't go out into the master remember that the green dot is output to the master or the parent the blue is that it has sense assigned to it and the orange is that it has receives assigned to that track they are all coming out through this main channel that it's an auxiliary channel or i have some eq and rc inflator that it's some sort of imitation of the sun of the oxford inflator and i have a spring reverb and probably these effects might sound a little bit better than the ones built in the plugin that are an EQ, a saturation, and a spring reverb. Okay, so let's listen to stock plugins and third party plugins. And third party plugins. within the whole musical idea. And the third party plugins. So you make the decision. But you get the idea of why it could be interesting. Even though you have an internal routing where you can apply effects to scene A and scene B and then use those and send them into auxiliaries, this is a really powerful synth because it has tons of routing options. But the fact that in Reaper we have a way to record scene A and scene B separately and process them separately and then sum them as we want, yeah, I, I, I don't think I need to explain myself way too hard on why that's a bigger and broader option. Maybe you want to make the demo with this effect zone because it's so much lighter on the CPU, but maybe for the final sound design, you might want to go heavier on the effects processing. Again, just do whatever you want, like give it a try, figure out which kind of plugins have multi-out, which plugins that you have installed have multi-out. And this is not exclusive of virtual instruments. Some audio plugins also have these kind of things. For example, Leapwings Dyn 1.3 has 12 channels output. Uh, for example, Isolate by, by TV Pro Audio has 10 channels output and so forth. Not every single plugin VST3 version has a uh, multi output. So check it out. Most of your instruments probably will as long as they are VST VST3s. Have fun with it. If you like this kind of video, like, share, comment and subscribe. Uh, straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis and thanks for listening.